and then putting them in the clouds and making that transition. That's where the disorientation can happen right there. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Icarus flight training device. So like I said, this is the Icarus flight training device. Now, the main purpose of this device is this is gonna help simulate flying into inadvertent instrument meteorological conditions or flying into IMC. Flying into IMC is one of the biggest killers of helicopter pilots and airplane pilots. Basically, when you fly into a cloud, if you're not prepared for it and you're not expecting it, you can lose spatial awareness, you can lose your spatial orientation. And if you're not looking at your instruments and you're not comfortable looking at those instruments and flying off those instruments, you get into an unusual attitude and you can crash. Like I said, this is like one of the biggest killers of pilots. So getting better at flying into clouds, getting prepared to go in invert an IMC is a really good way to try to get your skills up and try to prevent an accident. Now it goes without saying the best way to prevent an in invert an IMC crash or flying into a cloud and losing orientation is just not flying into a cloud. So we've been using this device for about six months. I've personally been using it. I've used it with students to help them them learn instruments and get comfortable at making the inadvertent IMC switch and that's the thing so it is a cool piece of technology I'll talk about the price here in a little bit but basically what it does so you've got this film and it's just a cutout right here I'll get some b-roll so you guys can see but this is what it looks like when you're wearing it they've got a helmet clip but right now I'm just wearing like a basic hat um, I'll pull this off so you can see but um, so I've just got like uh, a regular hat and there's just a clip uh a ball cap clip so you put that on and it goes in just like that and then there's a cord that comes down to this controller i'll just kind of put this behind me for now huh. okay so uh, here's the controller. So there's a controller and this has got the battery and you can manually control the film through the controller But there's also an app so this can Bluetooth pair to the app show I'll show you both of these but so I'm in clear mode right now So I can I don't know how well you guys can see but I can see through this like pretty well like it, it It's just a clear film and what you can do is press this small button and slowly change the film so Right there. I just went into the clouds Now my visibility is a little bit better and now it's totally clear. So here, I'll show you again. So there's the button right there and into the clouds, uh, like half a mile visibility or something and then clear. So pretty cool. Now I don't, I don't totally understand the technology, but um, it, it is cool how it works. So here's the app. There's a one mile visibility. Uh, what does that say? Half a mile visibility and less than one half mile of visibility. So. I'll start with the one mile visibility right there. And one of the interesting things that I want you to be aware of is right here, I touched the film. Now they're super, uh, they make it super clear, like don't touch the film. Do not put your fingers on the film. Grab it from the hat, grab it from the top visor part right here, this black part. Do not touch the film. And apparently that's what happens. You can see that like fingerprint on there. So that's kind of annoying. And at the price of this device, that really sucks. I don't know if there's anything they can do about it, but that's really annoying. So here's a half mile visibility. I'm just controlling it off the phone. And then here's less than half a mile visibility. So really bad. And then I can bring it back to VFR. So I'll talk about where this is like really cool and really useful. But one of the also interesting things that you can do is you can set a timer uh, in the settings app. You can set a timer for how long you want the transition into a cloud to be. So let's say you want to like hypothetically simulate like slowly flying into a cloud and slowly losing visibility like over a set duration like over five six seven eight nine seconds or maybe three seconds whatever you can change the duration which is actually pretty accurate you know when i've flown into clouds and in airplanes not helicopters um when you fly into a cloud you slowly lose that visibility i mean it can happen pretty quickly but you slowly lose that visibility so it's kind of good to tr set a time duration so i've got it set to six seconds right now and we're gonna go full IMC. So look at my eyes right now and I'll go three, two, one. So it is slowly putting me into the cloud and now I'm fully in the cloud, which is pretty cool. I'll do it again. Three, two, one. And clear, it's pretty cool. I think one of the best ways to use this as like a flight instructor and for really good flight training, the, one of the best ways you can use this device is send your student out 
and while you're flying with them and just let them get comfortable with just wearing the visor just in visual condition so like this like i can see my hands you can see my hands through the visor like i can see good and so let them get comfortable just don't turn it on for a while and then what you do is after maybe like 10 or 15 minutes into the flight you're like all right hold a standard rate turn to the right um whatever or hold a steep turn to the right so they start banking the aircraft and all of a sudden you just go into the clouds right there. So they can't see it out anymore. And then they have to transition to the instruments. So that really quick transition going from like visual to while they're in a bank and then putting them in the clouds and making that transition. That's where the disorientation can happen right there. Uh, it's while you're like outside looking visual and you're not ready, especially if you're not holding a level attitude, if you're doing something weird like banking and that's the point where you go into a cloud, that's where you can get those weird uh, spatial disorientation. You can get really uncomfortable and I've experienced this. It, it's really one of the worst feelings you can experience as a pilot is like, Oh my God, it's like a panic attack. Um, you lose your awareness. You kind of forget how to fly. It's just like this pure blackout panic. And so if you can get comfortable with that transition and at least know what it feels like and know how to like force your brain to look at the instruments, pull yourself level wings, and then start to go through your scan, looking at the airspeed, looking at the altitude, navigating. That transition, this is where this really comes into play. So now you wanna know the cost. How much does this cool technology cost? It's not cheap, it's really not. It is, uh, this device itself, I think, I think the airplane version is maybe 1200 and the helicopter version is 1500. It's definitely more than $1,000. So if I'm being honest, is it worth thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars probably not don't get me wrong the technology is freaking unreal it, it's it's really cool but for more than a thousand dollars and i don't know i'm conflicted because it's like it's your safety it's your life it's like a thousand dollars or multiple people's lives and a lost helicopter and a very traumatic crash of course a thousand dollars is worth it so i i actually i don't know if i'm really set on how i feel um if you're like a flight school or a flight operator and you're giving your, you're investing in your training program, then yes, it's worth it. Um, but if you're just a pilot out there by yourself, is, it, is there any benefit in this or just like a film, a, a blacked out film like this where you have to get at the instruments? The, the real benefit here is the transition, the, the having to make the switch, which is the realest part. And that's the best part. Um, I think for a flight program or a flight school, yes, it's worth it. But for like small operations, it might not be worth it. It's just really expensive. Maybe like the five to $700 range, but when you get up to like 1500, it's a little bit crazy. One thing I do like about it is it's pretty comfortable. It's not that heavy um, on the front. Maybe a couple counterweights on the back would be nice. You know, I did a long flight this week. It was almost two hours and I was under the hood and it did kind of start to hurt my neck. But the nice thing is you can still wear your headset. Here, I'll show you real quick. Like this is not an aviation headset, but these are just some regular headphones. And if I, you know, really good um, comfort. And so we went with uh, just, the ball cap mount but they do have like a helmet mount so if you're you're like a flight program and you guys are wearing helmets you can do a helmet mount and it's really convenient you know it's it's a pretty cool device it's i think it's better than just regular foggles to simulate instrument conditions but it is kind of freaking expensive. So there's a lot of pros for this device. Let me know what you think down below. Do you have any questions about this or how would you use this? Is it worth its money? Is it worth how much it costs? Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.